Welcome back. Let's attempt to find a game in the Supernova 7 tournament. Um, so we're going to allow game invitations from other players. Make sure our volume's not overly loud. And seek here. And that puts... Uh, oh! Hey, check that out. I think we've played some of these other players already. Um, yeah, let's get a game going. Good luck. And sorry, this means we'll be in emotes only mode for duration of the game. Um, sorry about that. Should have put that in my stream title. Fix that right now. So yeah, we're going to play this central file rook, which looks pretty exciting to me. Uh, yeah, I could have thought this one through a bit a little bit better. So in general, third file and opposing rook work best in a double swinging rook game, and I probably should have thought a little bit about that, but um, we're going to figure out exactly how this works now that I've uh, more or less fully committed to this. Um, so let's build the castle and call that built. And now uh, consider a bishop exchange. Hmm. If a bishop exchange happens here, just where are we even? Um. Also make sure the video... Okay, yeah, it looks good. Um, so... Exchanging bishops would confuse this position a bit. Um, yeah, we're going to play this either with the aim of a bishop... Oh. Hang on. I've confused quite a few different things here. And in so doing, have welcomed a bishop exchange that I am not really prepared for. Um, yeah, how do I get myself out of this? Okay, we're going to close the center. They've not played the rook to the third file, so I'm not so afraid of this advance. Because I can counter that rook move with this rook move. And things are still complicated, but, um... I mean, this is where I would prefer to have my silver located, not my rook. Um, but yeah, we're going to stop them from pushing the, this pawn in front of the king. And this, in turn, means I can maybe transpose into Ishida. Um, the third foul rook stuff. Now note, this diagonal is closed. This could be huge for me. Okay, wow. We're going to go on a wild attack, which could be ill-advised. Or at least, let me think about it. So I'm debating pushing this pawn. I mean, these pawns are in the way of my rook. I've lost a tempo based on how I got here, but... With this pawn pinned to their bishop, maybe I can get away with, like, making things crazy. If I wait one more turn, they're going to play the silver up, and suddenly I can't push the center pawn anymore. That's what I'm concerned about in this instant. Yeah, so let's... yeah, I really want to see where this goes. So, I've sacrificed a pawn for some activity. Perhaps the activity itself is pretty dubious, but... Um, I felt it necessary to be doing something here.
Oh, my rook should also aim for the head of the bishop. Um, depending where all their other pieces go, that could be a really soft target. In fact, right now it's a soft target. I should not wait even a single more move. Yeah, this is exactly the time for my rook to strike the bishop's head. My mistake for not seeing this earlier. And if the rook attempts to protect this point, my bishop can take this pawn. They don't have a way to protect this point. At least not directly. So, yeah, I probably should have spotted this all earlier, um, but we'll take it now. My opponent kind of forced my hand. I kind of was required to see all this, given how uh, they were unwilling to let my rook become active. I had to find activity some other way. Um, so I was kind of compelled to find this. Yeah, this is where things get confusing, though. Uh, actually, if rook takes pawn, nothing's protecting their rook. So I say this is confusing, but I don't think I really mean that. I think what I mean is that their bishop takes my lance while I get a dragon and a knight, and things get fun, but not so confusing. We've both built some semblance of a castle here. Um, yeah, so let's get a dragon and see where we end up. So my dragon is aligned with their king already. What this means is that I can start attacking immediately. Um, um, and in fact, a really effective way to do so is to keep hitting this pinned gold over and over. At least it looks pretty effective. I, it's going to cost me a pawn each time I hit it, but... Um, yeah, this pawn is going to be the lever to open this position. Oh, right. Sorry, I missed this. Uh, I thought I would be able to draw the silver forward. Evidently not. Um, so it's not so trivial here. Um, yeah, so... Ah... <sighs> This attack is strange. So I'm going to try to encase the horse, but also um, have my generals connected with each other. If they had a knight, this would be terrifying. As it is, it's only just scary. It could be a lot worse. Um, so I want to take the knight, but I also want to be able to like attack on more than one front here. Well, oh, if I try to attack down the center file, they just put a lance on the same file. That's not so bright. So how else can I attack? I mean, I could sacrifice a pawn. Either, actually, their gold general would take this time. It's That's not so bright for me either. Um,
Oh, okay, so in terms of finding a move that both attacks and defends, a rook drop over here might actually succeed at that. Um... There's got to be several squares I could put a rook on where it could both attack and defend something. It's really looking like I need to take this knight. Yeah, I need this knight. If, if for no other purpose, then I can need it to help defend my king. It feels like a wasted move, but... Um, I don't know, I just need that piece. Right. So the lance is itself a target here. Actually, um, maybe I could use a rook to attack that. So this attacks both the gold and the lance and does not subject myself to a bishop fork or pin or skewer. because these rooks are on opposite um, diagonals. I would say color square complexes, except these boards, unlike chess boards, are uncolored. But in chess, like you would call this a light square and a dark square. But here, there is no such concept of square color. Um, all right, so if I take the gold, I get a gold and a bishop, which actually looks quite nice. Um, if I, oh, hang on. If I take the gold, that's check. We're taking the gold with check. And then we can consider what we want to take next, although the king is kind of a soft target here. Um, I mean, this just taking all the pieces has to be effective. Now, if I take this, they can't interpose with a pawn. So the king has to go marching out. Um... Taking is not the most effective move here, though. Like, if I could surround the king. It's unfortunate I don't have a pawn in this vicinity. Otherwise, they would support a gold checkmating. Uh, so. Yeah, finding mate here is a bit tricky, unfortunately. Either that or I'm just not great at finding checkmate, which is probably also the case. But yeah, uh, pieces do not do well at attacking in both directions. Um, yeah, where the heck is the mate? And if I let him take my dragon, like, this makes it... yeah. I don't like inviting his king forward, because I don't see a mate. But, um... Also, like, the only thing he could block with here is the bishop, and that's not going to help protect his king any. Uh... So yeah, we want to surround this king. I'm tempted to put a gold right here, then they push this pawn. 
then I place a knight. And the king doesn't escape, does it? Um, so they can stop my knight drop here. Um, I'm sorry, a pawn... No, they could use some piece to protect against a knight drop their mate. Um, but I do threaten also a lance right on the king's head. That's resourceful. I admit I missed this. Um, maybe this is why I hesitated to drop my gold immediately. Well, hang on, I still have a mate. Let's check. And then the lance mates next. That was tricky. Good game. Yeah, well played. Let's see uh, what comments we have. Okay, thanks for the game. Have a nice day. Um, that's entirely fair. Uh, yeah, so perhaps the opponent has other things to attend to. Like this game, they we both missed quite a few things. Um, I guess it'll take us out of emote only mode. Although it looks like a lot of people are searching for games this morning. So um, yeah, no, like I missed this entire time. Um, this particular combination is subject to, um, me just taking right there. Like, this I needed to spot as early as possible. So when I lift the rook and they play this, uh, well, at this point, yeah, in fact, this just refutes this move. So there's this attack here but also there's everything that happened in the game. Um, so this, I guess, is the hard counter to um, slow play from the opponent. But this itself, um, like they do say that often these uh, ranging rook openings transition into each other. And it is often true that a third foul rook is more effective than a central foul rook in this double swinging rook game. But, yeah, when they take an extra move to move the rook over, this actually does give me... Okay, yeah, what I played, I guess, was okay. Um, and this here is the big mistake, because um, now I have this attack. Uh, had they not done that, had they just, like, I don't know, what's the typical move here? Um, let's say they just pushed on the edge. If I had tried the same tactic here, well, for this to work... Actually, no, I'm mistaken. I can do this. And I can do this. And... Um, this is a sacrifice on their part. Um, so, this might be playable. It's probably not favorable, but... Um, so yeah, upon my lifting my rook, things get complicated. Um, but to me, maybe this means that I should do this anyway. Um, yeah. I have to take a closer look at some of this uh, after the stream. I don't want to waste everybody's time looking at stuff that neither of us knows. 
But anyways, there's some opening considerations that were sorely missed, but eventually I spotted this, and a number of tactics followed here after. Um, the most crucial tactic... Yeah, this actually was good defense on their part. I missed that they could do this. So that was a big whiff. That I thought, oh, hang on. Actually, it's not entirely a disaster, because I did remove the pawn that they had in defense. And that pawn can also often make it difficult to put pieces near the king. Um, but yeah, we both missed quite a few things. Uh, this lance drop just loses a lance. It's possible, maybe, somehow, uh, after they defend this point, um, there might be a lot of complications. In fact, yeah, this would be an argument against what I did in the game. Um, yeah, that shuts down my attack, so, uh, that's an argument against my pawn takes pawn. My pawn takes pawn's just not effective at all. And if I do this, supposing they do this, um, this is no longer possible because of, uh, Nifu. So they would have to find something else, like, I guess, putting a lance here. Um, so I'll have to take a closer look at all of this later. We both missed quite a few tactical ideas, but I happen to find some that just worked very nicely here. All right, let's see if we can find another game. Uh, so yeah, let's wait for game. Um, oh, in fact, I forgot, I can just click on the names to see if we've played them before in this tournament. Um, have we played Miss Vis? Nope. I've already played with Shishipkin. All right, Jianjin, here we go. Good luck. Good luck. This should be interesting. Uh, we've both been practicing pretty hard. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, as I keep mentioning that this central file rook probably isn't the sharpest thing for me to play, I seem to be drawn to it, like a moth to a flame. Um, I just really like the activity I get from this opening. Um, hmm. See, I'm going to follow through on my initial idea, although I'm not fully sold on it. Um, yeah, let's get my king out of here. So my king covers this weak point. Okay, my opponent has built... Well, they're building a Mino castle on that side of the board. Um... Let's see. Yeah, I should avoid anything too aggressive unless I know what I'm doing. And right now I'm not fully sure what I'm doing. Okay, so if I offer a bishop exchange, very likely they will oblige. Is this a good thing? Uh, probably in some respects. Actually, where this is good is that the rook normally would belong in this third file. It's going to have a hard time getting to the third file here. Uh, where this kind of falters is all of my pieces are inactive right now. Um, but let's try to remedy that. All right, so they have volunteered uh, their bishop into this pin. Um... So I'll take a minute to 
build half Mino here and see if they do similar. Now, what might end up happening is I might attack on this edge file. Oh, okay, so they're not intending to stop me from advancing in the center. Um, <laughs> I want my Rook to be active. So we're going to make that the priority here. Uh, that's, that's a bit ambitious. Um, well, my silver is out of place. Hmm. They are striking at my weak point. I will give them that. Um... Interesting. We will strike first. So to heck with everything uh, Joseki related, we're going to play some off Joseki line. Right. And now normally you'd play the rook all the way back, and that might be wise, but also I don't like this pawn advancing this instant. Um, so for right now, I'm going to take a desperate maneuver to stop this pawn from moving forward. So we're going to play like this floating central rook. Um, and to ensure my rook has some future, um, I'm going to play this so my rook could swing over this way if necessary. And you remember what we saw last game? Because I sure forgot. <laughs> like this notion of my rook going up and hitting the head of the bishop is something I should recognize or need to get better at recognizing. Um, so, I mean, yes, their rook can defend this, but it's kind of not the happiest position ever to defend. All right, um, we'll attempt to defend my weak point over here. And so we've built up a strong castle that defends against attacks from the side. But that's not really what we need here. Because we're going to be attacked from the front. If the knight moves, then I can uh, hit this pawn. Like, if the knight goes right there, I can strike the pawn from the front, and nothing can defend it. Okay. So now I'm faced with a dilemma of um, how do I attack this king? So I want to attack on the edge, but the king is not that close to the edge. He's playing a really low castle. So he's not got a lot of space in which to maneuver. Um, so I'm debating do I want to push this uh, pawn 
on an unopposed file. I'll eventually need it to break open the king on this square. Or do I have some other kind of attacking idea? Right now I don't think I do. Uh, pushing this pawn is risky, however, because um, eventually they might do a pawn drop on the same file. Yeah, I need to try to break this file open. Okay, so they've played a silver wall, trapping their king in. I think I can be satisfied with their king being so uh, thoroughly entombed. I'm still debating, like I have not moved the silver because it's supporting the bishop, and I see that they're avoiding a bishop exchange. Like, several times now they could have offered it, but chose not to. And now the offering it is not so bright, because, I mean, yes, it would help the rook move over to the same file that my king's on, but um, even offering it wouldn't necessarily mean that I'm forced to take it or anything. So I fly pressure here instead of on the edge, because the king is not anywhere near the edge file. So I can save myself from having to push here right away. If I have a lot of extra time, I can consider pushing the edge pawn, but I don't think I do. So yeah, because they can't move this knight forward to toward the center, I'm curious, like, if they move it toward the edge, that leads to edge file tactics. Um which could be unwise. So I'm not sure how they're going to play this. So that's why I keep pushing all these pawns, because I don't see for either of us a continuation that looks too great. If I saw some clear attacking idea, I'd probably just go for that. But, all right, um, so the rook is defending the silver. Um, their bishop has moved, so I can consider, <laughs> a pawn drop back here might not be the worst idea ever. Um, they, yeah. The pawn drop back here would be unconventional, because normally I'd want my silver to move here, but... Um, can my silver climb without something terrible happening? I'm not sure. A <sighs> pawn drop would be cowardly and give up my attacking prospects. I don't want to do that, then. Um... Oh, they're super interested in pushing in this file. My best way to repel that attack is with um, the aid of all my generals. I see. So this is their master plan. Um, but yeah, if I have my general nearby, could this really go poorly? I wonder. Um, well... So if I do that, they push the pawn, supposing that I take it. Silver takes, silver takes. Yeah, they have overwhelming material force at the moment. I'll have two pawns. Uh, having those two pawns means I can do tactics. I think tactics work in my favor. So if I take, if silver takes, I could pawn drop on the rook, they could actually do silver takes silver. It's a higher priority move than my pawn takes rook threat. Um, 
Yeah, my rook is misplaced. If I do silver takes, if they take the silver pawn drop on the rook's head, um, that might work. No, that they could promote, and then I take the promoted piece. That's the difference. Hmm, that's interesting. What happens if everything liquidates, though? In fact, no, I can't pawn drop if, uh, if I take with silver first. That's my mistake. Um, So if I take, bad things happen. This is what that boils down to. And if I don't take, I think it's okay. Yeah, so taking the pawn is just a huge red herring here. I know it looks terrifying just allowing them to uh, start attacking right away, but um, concretely it seems to work. So now I have two pawns in hand, which means we get fun tactics. Yeah, it's just kind of curious how pawns make it difficult to attack sometimes. I mean, in chess, it's more or less obvious when a pawn uh, cannot help you attack, like when your pawn is blocked by an opposing pawn and there's no way to remove those two pawns, um, then your pawn's in the way. It's often obvious in chess when the pawn is in the way. Here in Shogi, because pawns can promote, it's not so obvious, like what's a good pawn and what's a bad pawn. So yeah, they do have more pieces. They have three attacking. Uh, I have three defending this. So if they pawn drop right there, I cannot just exchange everything. Um, but if they have a pawn dropped right here, the pawn threatens to promote, but I control the focus point. Um, likewise, I could drop a pawn here. Silver takes, silver takes, bishop takes, silver takes. So like I control this point just as well as they do. Um, but dropping up here is more interesting. But it's still not very interesting because it doesn't work. <laughs> well no, if I drop there, gold takes because otherwise I get the lance. I like both the knight and the lance, but I kind of like the lance a lot more with this file being so exposed. Um, mm, it's complicated, isn't it? This feels like the right thing to do here. So there's two objects here. One, I really want gold to take, actually. 
because this will open up a silver drop on his half of the board. But two, if the rook does take, then I can take the lance and threaten to take the knight. Or I can take the knight first and then threaten to follow up by taking the lance. So actually both ways work out. Yeah, I'm not sure whether this bishop move intends some sort of edge file technique or whether the intent is um, to offer a bishop exchange on this diagonal without sacrificing the lance. But regardless what the intent is, this pawn seems to like jumble my opponent's castle and um, maybe displace the rook or make it less effective somehow. Okay, so I only mentioned two possibilities because of this one I did not even think of. Um, it looks reasonable, which is concerning. Um, so being the greedy player that I am, I want to take this silver. Um, that's probably much too greedy here. It feels risky to push this pawn chasing that. Yeah, attacking from my castle seems unwise. Um, especially when there's edge file tactics on the loose. I mean, I really do want to have a silver, but what would I even do with it? I don't know. Instead, let's try to activate my horse. Um, so bring it back toward the opposing bishop and prevent like a bishop forking my horse and lance. So with this pawn in the way, they can no longer pawn drop here safely. They could still do the pawn drop, but it's not, um, it would be losing a pawn which might not be terrible, but yeah, right now my threat is horse takes pawn, attacking the rook and the bishop. Um, now the bishop is defended right now, but will it forever be defended? Who knows? Um, okay, so I'm debating pawn 5-5, five five, but before that, maybe I want to take this and hit the rook again. Or maybe I want to drop my lance here, threaten to push my lance, gold takes, land takes, rook takes, but um, there's a lot of ideas. Pawn 5-5 five five looks like the sanest possibility here. Um, just trying to calm things down. Yeah, that bishop takes lance in the corner looks scary. So we'll transition back into a central file, cheerful central rook. Oh, really? Okay, they're starting to open up their castle. I'm not sure whether they intend pawn takes or bishop takes, but it is thought-provoking in either event. Um... I'm going to play this attacking their rook. So if they're going to go chasing my lance and knight, I would like to have um, as much material attacking their king as I can have. Yeah, I think that by hitting this rook and then later taking this pawn, hitting the silver, um, I can sufficiently distract my opponent 
from ever getting the slants. Um, so where does my rook want to attack their king from? Actually, having another bishop might not be a bad thing, so plugging the center, ensuring that if they... Yeah, this could be interesting. But also of interest to just be smashing the king on this file. And let's go directly after the king, and also protect our knight. Oh, shoot! This would have been a great opportunity to... Well, I didn't have time to put the rook here and then the knight there. My mistake. Um, maybe I did have time. Either way, I'm attacking this rook, is what I was thinking about. But yeah, I could have lined up the rook right in front of the knight. Um, but no, I think this is more aggressive anyhow. Because like, this is the weak point. And this is very much defended. So a third file attack is not likely to prevail here, whereas attacking directly on the square that um, is only defended by two pieces seems more likely to prevail here. Um, yeah, pushing this pawn is a rook sacrifice, so I can understand why they hesitate. I wonder if I could just take this pawn. It seems unwise, but also, like, my rook could be more active on the center file. Yeah, we're just going to keep this closed. That's okay. So, tactics indirectly hold my position together. If rook takes, I can do horse takes pawn. Just checking how much time I have until the uh, meeting. Still got 45 minutes. So I'm attacking the rook. I'm attacking the pawn, and more importantly, if I take the pawn, I'm attacking the silver. And so, as much as I love having a rook to attack with, I'm not sure that it's the piece that I need here. The silver might be the very thing that I need. 
in chess you just take like you get some material advantage and then you just liquidate all the other pieces so often the rook is the right piece in shogi the right piece is just whatever works in that occasion uh yeah the silver does escape if i pursue it further so we're gonna actually take the rook at this point um Okay. Yeah, I should have. Now that I'm in Vioyomi, I should no longer try to avoid falling into it. Um, but no, this is still the right move here. Like, this pawn was a menace and needed to be removed. Um,. Plus, their biggest threat is to put the bishop on 5-5, five five, although it's not feasible here. Um, and what I read against this is that silver takes pawn. Uh, the fourth file pawn. Um, what I'm trying to read is after I do that, what's going to happen. Where am I going to attack next? I think since they have no pawns in hand, my next idea is a lance on the center file hitting the gold. And just disassemble the castle slowly. I think that's my plan. I would like to have another general in defense. Because, like, I mean, the knight does a good job. A knight is certainly a useful defender, but this feels tenuous. Oh, okay, my plan was to put the lance to hit the gold, but um, lance could be useful to hit the knight, but I want to attack toward the king. They want to promote on this square. That intention is clear. Um, here that intention actually loses a piece, so I should encourage it to happen. A pawn drop would not encourage it. Pawn drop would be illegal. Yeah, so to defend my position, um, let's put the lance on this file. I've got this square covered, the 5 3. Um, okay. So they're attacking my silver. Um, my silver can take care of itself and fight back against the knight. It might have been safer to... No, actually retreating would encourage a pawn advance on the silver's head, so this is forced. Um, but yeah, I've got the square covered. I briefly considered a rook drop to hit the bishop, but um, my silver was hanging. And I don't want to give them a silver right now. Um, not when I can avoid exchanges. If I can continue avoiding exchanges, then uh, my pieces can all be active. All right, so now is the critical moment. This is where um, I actually do need exchanges to occur. Unless I can find some super forceful way out of it, but no. Um, all right, let's attack the bishop. Again, I debated a rook drop to attack the bishop, but this is a lighter way to attack it. And the silver on this side of the board is doing nothing other than supporting the pawn and attacking the bishop. And the supporting the pawn is not useful because I want this gold away from the king. So, um, yeah, this accelerates my attack while trying to put something into my defense. They're debating... Should they push the pawn, sacrificing the bishop? 
Maybe they should. Um, but like, if they sack the bishop, then I could take the silver. They take my gold. I I'm threatening to take the bishop. So instead, if they promote, I take the silver. They take my lance, and then I take the promoted pawn. That's how I'm reading this. Thirty uh, actually, they could promote the silver here, couldn't they? And then I take the bishop. But yeah, what I'm reading is, in all these lines, the bishop's going to move. Or, um, or it's going to move upward. And if it moves upward, I've gotten a free knight out of all of this. Right. Oh, they moved this here, no promotion. Interesting. I'm not sure if it mattered one way or the other whether that actually did promote. Um... This is threatens to take a gold, and I think I'm okay with that. I think I can handle a gold drop in my side of the board. Uh, silver takes silver. Okay, yeah, this bishop is too much of an attacking force to reckon with. Right, so this is too close to my camp. I allow, cannot allow him to just keep taking my generals. So he's got one gold and one pawn that's almost but not quite promoted. Um, and I have all these other pieces. So yeah, this gold drop is what I was concerned about, but um, I think I have an adequate answer to whatever, wherever he chooses to drop it. Yes, against this drop. Um, yeah, I think now it's appropriate for my silver to take. So we remove the promoted pawn. And again, this is kind of awkward. Um, since my entire castle is floating. Um, now my rook is exposed across the rank at this point. So I did achieve one constructive defensive thing here. But really I should have a better defense. So something that might help with defense is if I like stick a bishop in the center of the board. Um, would cover squares in every direction. Yeah, so let's put this here just to be safe. It hits toward the king, it defends the pawn, and covers like whatever nonsense might ever happen back there. But yeah, this is the focal point that I'm going to continue striking at. I can be nervous about this silver drop for a while, but eventually I need to do something. Alright, so I half expected him to do something like that. Um... I'm actually curious what he's going to do now that this kind of opens his king. Um, yeah, let's go back one. This pawn is still defended. Um, 
So he has no pawn to drop against a uh, bishop check. So the bishop check seems to be a real threat. Although checking is not the same thing as checkmate. And yeah, to keep attacking, I might need to just promote the pawn and promote the token, or lance. Um, that might be my f most efficient route into his castle. Okay, so now the silver's not going to be used to attack me. So I can uh, attack without fear. Okay. He's got a pawn. All my pieces are super clumsy. Um, I guess let's see him use the pawn, right? Since this gold cannot go back to defend the king in one move, it'll take multiple moves for this gold to retreat. We're going to do this in-between attacking move. Uh, although if, if he does a pawn drop to defend the gold, it does take me longer to dismantle this all. But um, yeah, so this is kind of what I expected, but it doesn't work. Um, so this gold is still pinned, is the problem. Um, now maybe I just completely whipped. Yeah, I missed a Sume. I missed like a mate in three right there. Shame on me for missing that. Um, I was so excited by this game. Uh. <laughs> so I seem to uh, have that rating again. <laughs> yeah, uh, eventually we'll make it. It's not going to happen overnight. It'll happen someday. And, you know, it'll surprise us all, all of a sudden, when we didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, there was a few lost pieces. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, so this is more where I thought the silver was going to end up. Um, this is actually clever on his part. Um, whoa, really? That uh, but uh, the rook is hanging. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't quite work. Um, yeah, so... Um, right, this sort of thing. I'm trying to remember. Yes, this is... that's more thematic, although I'm not sure I managed to get it in. So I have to take here, I guess. Um... Uh, So yeah, I think here I play my silver up anyway, right? And then we managed to get into the normal theory. Although, like, 
central file against fourth file. I don't think favor central file at all. Oh. Oh, well, okay. Interesting. Yeah, this might point out a flaw in... Hmm. There looks like there's a defect in my structure here. So I have to look closer at some of these uh, central file versus other stuff. Probably in these other openings, I should not be doing this. Um, uh, bishop attack is too slow, I guess. Yeah, I did look at some of the variations where we start liquidating all the pieces on the square, and I'm like, mm, that looks kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, you uh, were right uh, about if I take things uh, get messy. <laughs> Hmm. Oh wow, yeah, that is that's special. Huh. Well that's a lot of material deficit to overcome. Yeah. Interesting sack though, but you need like one more piece to make it work. I should have thought more about that. It always surprises me when a heavy piece gets sacrificed for a lighter one. <laughs> yeah, this pawn drop was so nice. I was so happy with it. Although it might not be a good idea, but it felt so nice to get it on the board. Um... I wonder, yeah, here if we have a bishop exchange, that gets kind of murky, doesn't it? Like, I don't see a way to continue attacking there. Uh, but, like, what am I supposed to do? I wonder, can I do this anyway? So, like, part of my object is to break up the castle. Uh, so now, yeah, I'm threatening to win the gold, and then now that that's over, I can just close the center again. It's a, such a weird position. And possibly I'm missing something critical here. Oh, in fact, whoops, uh, I missed this. Um, hmm. uh, <laughs> well, eh. I missed this idea. So. Uh, so, yeah, I should have something to do, but I'm not sure what. So, like, if I attack back here, you get some kind of attack going, and I get some kind of an attack going, and who knows where we end up. But, yeah, maybe my pawn drop in the center is best anyway to force these kinds of questions. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, maybe I should take this. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, well... I think I need to stop this promotion. And then, yeah. You're right, you're right. Uh, but maybe, um, instead back here, I don't know. Is this fine? This looks messy. Uh, this is complicated. This is... I don't know, like, what's going on. Um, so if I had a silver, I'd be a lot happier, because then I could just fork the golds and just try to declare a win or something, but no. Um, yeah, in the game we had lots of fun tactics. Uh, yeah, so here, do I just take this? And free rook, right? Um, I'm trying to think how do I even capitalize on this at this point. Okay. Um, I checkmate you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I've played this castle before. It needs to be played very carefully. Um, because there is nowhere to run. Yeah. There really isn't. So, yeah. When I start attacking, this kind of forces a response. Um, yeah, actually, um, I wonder, so in uh, similar positions, I've uh, pushed the silver too. But I wonder how bad the threat actually is um, on here. Yeah. Uh, good point. Yeah. Still learning. Flex openings, aren't we all? Um, could do this. Yeah, I suppose I could. Um. Let's see, where where was it that the silver first pushed? Um Well yeah, here this is pretty nice. Ah, so these are the sort of attacking ideas. 
Yeah, that makes sense, actually. With my pawn on 3-5, um, opening this file results in the silver going to a strange place. But okay, yeah, these are the general ideas uh, which forced the silver move in the first place. Um... I have much to learn about this, so, um, but yeah, this, it did surprise me, but yeah, it, to me, I thought it was premature, but again, I don't really know, and yeah, this is some nice tactics on my part, where I'm like, there are ways I could liquidate many pieces, but I picked the simplest answer. Oh, actually... Yeah, this is scarier than I thought it was, but also if I wanted to use my knight. Um, hmm. Interesting. Interesting. In hindsight, I picked the wrong diagonal for my bishop. Um, it actually belongs right here. Yeah, just... Yeah. Oops. <laughs> and then there's this threat. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was so fixed on the other target, <laughs> this one, that I missed, uh, yeah. Um, now this makes all the sense in the world. <laughs> yeah, I need, uh... Need to do more, Sume. <laughs> like, way more. Yeah. Here it's over. Let's see. Um. Good game. Yeah. Um. Likewise, uh, and castle safe, uh, next time. <laughs> or read very carefully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll try to get the team. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Take care. Yeah, I too have to go soon. So, uh, yeah. Wow. We got a couple Supernova games in this morning. Uh, Jian Jian has done many Sume Shogi on stream. I have not. So like, he says he needs to do more, but like his Sume allowed him to put up the firmest possible defenses after having lost. Too much material. I'm not actually sure that he needs to do more Sume at this point, but um, because he seems pretty uh, keen on like what the weak points are and how to attack them. It's more like this kind of crazy tactic here. Like, give this kind of position to a player and have them figure out like what do you want to do. What's complicated in Shogi is that when both players are attacking, um, it can be hard to figure out which attacks are more important. And, like, here, this is a really good example of, like, there's an attack, there's an attack. Um, eventually this knight might start hitting this point, 
this is under attack. Like there's a lot of things to prioritize here and you not want to give this to the lowest grade of beginner. No, the lowest grade of beginner could not handle this. But at some amateur level, players should be able to figure out um, the forest of variations that result from, um, so like there's this threat, this threat. Once there's there, the bishop can, or the silver can take any of these. So like key ideas, one, two, three, four, uh, this is a fifth key idea. And meanwhile, on this side, there's like this idea, there's this drop, uh, there's some other drops, and then there's silver takes knight, which I think is actually the strongest move here. Um, because, uh, after silver takes knight, um, it is possible that the opponent takes here. And this is the strongest position for me here. So since this doesn't work, this silver is immune from capture as long as the silver is on this square. Um, but if the silver moves away, like say if the silver um, promotes or moves here without promotion as in the game, if the silver is no longer on this square, uh, Gota has given up a move. Or, um, alternatively, I think this is the sharpest line, so here I have to consider um, this capture, this capture. Uh, and I actually misread this. I thought I would take the silver, uh, but here they get two generals if I do that. So if I take the bishop, they take my gold, I take here, and it costs them another move to keep attacking. Um, but here I have both of these points covered. Therefore, in this position, um, even though promoting, like, suppose they promote and I take, suddenly I lose a move in all of this and things get extremely messy. Um, so yeah, here, really, they either need to move the bishop away and then I need to find another tempo gaining move. Um, or in this case, I think I just take the silver from the lance. And they continue threatening an attack, but I'm able to, like, getting that one spear move uh, is quite useful. Yeah, well, actually, promoting the Tokian, like, it looks better on the surface, and maybe it actually does work better than the game. What am I talking about? Um, so, yeah, in this position, I think I just take the bishop, uh, and this results, and I still have everything covered, um, and I'm not subject to a gold fork. So even though my castle's, like, loose, I had this accounted for, too. So promoting the Tokian doesn't really, it might be the strongest move, but it also doesn't improve on the game. Um, the game, I think, is the best attacking sort of move, where you're trying to make things complicated. It's just this wasn't complicated enough. So I think the hardest thing to read out here um, is that I don't have to immediately react right here, but just me outright hanging a piece. Um, I mean, I take a knight out of it. like. But the point wasn't that I got the knight. Like, I could have done the same sort of thing with a rook drop, but then the bishop moves, and things continue to be complicated. Um, I mean, you could, I could give chase, and so that's not really the best example, but... Um, but yeah, if I place down a rook... Um, like, I might need this knight to attack later, so I want to start this with a capture. And if I'm not starting with a capture, all these things get very messy. Um, because now if I actually do want to take something... Well, I was thinking about this. Um, I think I missed an idea here. And that missed idea is that I can just take this gold. Okay, yeah, that's a mistake on my part. Um, now granted, I don't have a diagonal moving piece. So, um, 
against an inner position back here. Right now, I don't have the right piece I need to checkmate. But I can actually get it. So I should have read this out. I missed it. Um, but I think the key point I'm trying to make is that, like, in this whole combination, I don't know, I like being the player who captures first. Because if I do the first capture and the last capture, I win a piece. So this is how I managed to do the first capture. And, yeah. This is kind of unexpected, because who wants to just take a knight? But, in this case, taking the knight means that their attack slows down? I was considering taking here, but now I see bishop takes lance at the end. So, actually, maybe I'm just full of it. Um, yeah, maybe here I need to, like, block the bishop or something. Yeah, so there's a lot of key moves to consider for both players. But I think this is a good sort of exercise. Not every good exercise is sume. There's other good exercises to do. So, anyhow, I've got to run. Thanks for watching. See you next time.